All right, good evening, everybody, and welcome to Freedom Center Church. Woo! So we're going to pray for the service tonight. God, I just thank you, Lord, for the opportunity that we get to worship you, Lord Jesus. And I thank you, God, that your, your spirit, your presence knows no bounds, Father. And so regardless of, of whether we're in this room right now, Lord, in our homes, in our cars, we thank you for the, the technology that keeps us connected despite the distance that we're feeling, Father God, and that regardless of where we are, Lord, you are there. And so I pray for, you, for your presence to overwhelm us this evening, Father God, and for your word to speak to our hearts. So let it be good ground that will take it, the seed, and run with it, Father God. I just pray in your name. Amen.
Father, that we can come together and gather in the house of God. And we can praise you. We can worship you. is the quarantine. We don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like to be in a mask. I, I, I surely don't like to be at home, but we should see it in this hour. We should embrace it because the only one that can pull us through in this season of life is Jesus. And in this time of quarantine, all I kept thinking was, I'm going to be at home. And 
God started speaking to me a couple of months ago when we went deep into quarantine. He started talking to me about, about a relationship, going deeper with him. And this time is so precious because we're seeing it. People are seeing it as, oh my God, I, I'm, I'm, I'm in quarantine. But we should see it as, wow, I get to spend time with the King of Kings. I get to be in the presence of God. Following Jesus is looking to our future and not looking for the past that we have buried. As I began to pray, I started breaking things in my life that God started resurfacing from my past that I thought I had already buried. Something, some things I had, I opened because I let thoughts, I let emotions, I let feelings fill me and they begin to be bigger than the one I was following. You see, a lot of us are returning to a past that you might want to relive. So we go and bury things and we start wondering the what ifs. The what if, Esmer, you would have finished school two semesters ago? What if you would have done this? What if you would have done that? And you start wondering the what ifs. You cannot live on memories. You cannot live on thoughts or emotions that you bury. And God wants us tonight to break our past and leave it behind. Amen. So in John 12, 3, it says, Mary then took a pound of very costly perfume, a pure knot, and anointed the feet of Jesus, and wiped his feet with her hair, and the house filled with the fragrance of the perfume. Mary broke that perfume because it was a moment in her past. She knew if I give up my past, it will be broken forever because I have tried selling it, breaking it, but nobody has ever been worthy enough to take my past away. You see, she wanted somebody not to remind her of her past. Right now, before Jesus, we are having to break that. I had to break that. Tonight, break that. Break your past away because he's the only one that can erase it and give you a better future. We need to break our past and leave it at the altar and build the relationship with the deliverer, the true deliverer, Jesus. You can't bury a past you're not willing to let go. You have to break it so it can be turned into dust. And it doesn't tempt you to pick up the pieces and assemble it back up. You know, how many of you viewers or here in the congregation have had things broken and then you want to fix them. Because I surely do. I had this little turtle, it broke, and I wanted to put it back. I wanted to assemble it back. But it's not gonna look the same. You have to, it has to break. You have to break your, your past until it turns into dust. Because once it turns into a dust, you can't assemble it back up. Following Jesus requires leaving your shame, your past right there where you broke that perfume. There was an exchange when she broke the perfume, she made a decision to follow Jesus. Because the Bible says she anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair, a sign of surrender of giving all of me for a touch of the master. She knew that her past was going to be erased. The willingness to lay down her life and follow Jesus, the comforter, the one who was not going to bring up her past. The love of a master opened her eyes and she saw true love because when the storms were around her, he was the only one to truly love her because he didn't see her past while the rest in the room knew who she was. They knew who she was. They knew she was a woman people talked about. She was the one that would walk in places, oh, I know what she's, I know her past. You see, Jesus wants us to get rid of our past. Her past was a reminder to people in that room but when the fragrance of that perfume filled that room, those people saw her in a different way. They knew she came to Jesus and she knew it would cost her looks, murmurs, 
but she was willing to give her very best to the master. The house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume she poured her life. When you fill the room with fragrance, you start to get the stink of addiction, fear, anxiety, the things of your past, etc. He starts taking all those things and surrounding you with his fragrance. You see, his fragrance overpowered the perfume of her past. That's what happens to people who make a decision to follow Jesus. Followers of Jesus have to get rid of old self. Don't let the python mentality suck your existence, your identity. We have to be followers of Jesus and be in constant relationship with him. In Luke 9, 23 says, if anyone wants to follow in my footsteps, he must give up all right to himself, carry his cross every day and keep close behind me. We need to be so close to him so we don't get sucked in into that Python mentality where it will suck the life out of you and it will slowly end you leading to your spiritual death. You have to be in constant of the word. Find your identity. Find who you are. Because if you don't, it will slowly tell you you're not good enough. That complacency is good. That your life is well where you are. When in reality, you know your spiritual walk is stagnant. You're living your life in apathy. It will make you think your life is okay, but you stink like death. You see, Satan is around you, constricting you until you can no longer live. He makes you believe that you are still somehow breathing, but in reality, it's squeezing your very existence. You need a pro that hunts pythons and knows how to take them down. Jesus is on the hunt, every day taking pythons away from his children. You see, Jesus came to take my python away. On December 8th, 1999, the day I accepted him, I finally knew what love was when I accepted him and I never looked back. Not because my parents didn't show me love, but because there was something in my mind. There was a python telling me that they didn't love me, that my brothers and sisters didn't love me. There was something there that they didn't wanna let me go until he came to my rescue and he can come to your rescue tonight. He's so good. For so many years, the Python mentality sucked all the good things out of me and left me with the mentality that things were going to get better. You see, it tries to tell you things will get better. Just think about me, my story. I finally knew what love was. That's why today I live to follow the one who took the Python mentality away. I live to follow the one who took everything away from me. I live to follow the good thoughts, the pure thoughts, the promises for me. My joy comes in every season. You know, I, I don't understand how sometimes people can come to me and say, Pastor, Ezra, I'm, so, I'm so depressed, or I, I, I can't move on, or I can't move on from this situation. And I tell them my testimony, and some of them are, are just, they, they look at me or, or they tell me, but how do you do it? It's because I realize that my joy comes in every season. It doesn't matter if it's an up or a down. I wake up every morning praising the God who gave me a breath, the God who gave me life, the God who gave me the good thoughts, the God who promised me things. You see, just because something hasn't come to pass, he reminds me that he has written them in his heart. You see, sometimes some things haven't passed, but you don't understand that when you have a deep relationship, when you follow him, he writes them in the, in the center of his heart. And he has those thoughts, those dreams, those things that you want so bad. And you might think, when would they happen? When would they come to pass? You see, he's the writer. He's the author. He's yeah. the one that makes them happen. 
See, the Jesus that we follow holds the love to heal, to restore, to create, to imagine, to dream, to mend the broken. Your hunter is on the hunt to take away the python. He wants you to breathe 100% and not just 15% or 50%. He wants you to breathe 100%. He wants you to wake up every morning knowing that you're in 100% breathing the breath of God. You see, it gets better because once you let him rescue you, you commit, you change your lifestyle, and you live for him, not just part of your life. The life of a python around you constricts you to make choices that you have the power to set yourself free. You have the power to set yourself free. Amen. Yeah. By calling the hunter to come get you. That's all we have to do. That's all I have to do. I don't worry about my thoughts. I don't worry about what the doctor tells me. I don't worry about anything because I know that when that python wants to come, the hunter is awaiting it. Break away from the python mentality. You see our king is faithful through the ages. We must follow Jesus and build something in him. In Revelation 3.20, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him and he with me. This whole sermon blew me away. This revelation of dining with him captivated me to another level. When your father knocks, he comes to dine with you. That's where you get to sit and express your love for the master, for the king. You get to tell him of his deity, how awesome he has been to you, how loving he has been to your children, how generous and faithful he has been to you. The secret place where you're pouring everything out of you, the place where you get to express him how much love you have for him and how thankful that you get to follow him. Amen. This place where I get to tell him how I love to worship him. See, you got to get to that place where you tell God, I love that I get to worship you. Amen. This place where my daddy tells me that he's proud of me. That's the place that all of us should be in. A place where your daddy and only you can dine. And he tells you, I'm so proud of you. I'm proud because you got your masters. I'm proud because you're going to school. I'm proud because you're raising your children. I'm proud because you're raising your grandchildren. I'm proud because you're raising a foster kid. I'm proud because, and he just goes on to tell you in this dining place. Get to this place because you get to love him like no other. Amen. I get to love him like no other. Get, get to that place so you can know because nobody will ever know the love you have for God, only you. Only you will ever know yeah. that place. You see, you get to breathe him. You get to live heaven on earth. Create your own dining for just you and the king. I get to be with him in the secret place. And I am so privileged that I get to come every Sunday. And every time the doors of my church are open. Amen. He's the only thing that matters to me. Because if I had not the privilege of coming to the house of God during this time, I would beg my pastor to let me in. Because I'd rather be and the place where my God dwells. I'd rather be in the house of God. Because when you have that time, he starts creating. He starts building. Sorry, guys. <laughs>
Sorry. I didn't think I was going to cry this much. Because I'd rather be in this house. He's my beloved and he is mine. Amen. Imagine you get the honor to follow him. We get to be his disciples. Amen. We get to be hungry for him. Amen. To know things about him. He gets to fill a room with his presence. Just one touch, one word can change your life Amen. because his words can pierce the soul. This place has his, this place that he has taken me he has created a fire passionate woman for God. For the true king. And you have to find that dining place. Your place where he will change you. Let me tell you, you will never know how many tears I've shed during, during my time in this earth. I shed tears when I was a little girl trying to stop my abusers from abusing me. Or when I was older trying to commit suicide. The depression, the anxiety, the fear of death, no joy. Having a victim mentality, loneliness, until the counselor, the confident, showed up and I decided to dine with him. You see, tonight you might be going through things, but you can dine with the king of kings. You need to find your place where you can be with him. Only you know your story. Only, know, only you know your pain. The answer is, you got to get a hold of God who loves you and appreciates you. And no one can ever take that away from you. Following Jesus heals hearts. His friendship destroys depression. His love breaks the brokenness. He changes you inside out, but you got to let him. You got to let him dine with you. You see, follow him so you can see many attributes that are in him. I follow him because my greatest attribute of him is he has never left me and he has never forsaken me. He is my refiner fire. And in Psalm 39, three, he says, my heart was hot within me while I was musing the fire burn. Then I spoke with my tongue. Musing is defined as a period of reflection and thought. This scripture is perfect for this very hour in following Jesus. Our heart has to burn passionately for him. Yeah. And this hour, teach others to reflect and in thought about Jesus and be solely trusting in this very hour. Teach your children. Let them, get them together around the table. Let them be in the presence of God. Teach them. Teach them that he's the only one. Jesus is looking for followers, not just seekers. Mm -hmm. Are you willing to surrender your family with his presence? Be, be, be together in that presence of God. Jesus wants to burn up the desire that we choose not to give him. You see, sometimes we have desires of our lives and we must get rid of them. He wants us to give up our fear of this coronavirus. And he does not want us to live in fear and panic. In this time, we need to be in his presence instead of paying attention to the symptoms. Because I know I have. I have allergies. And I'm always, let me check my temp. Let me, let me see, let me, let me. And when you're so focused on them, you forget. And 
When you spend time with God, you know the difference between following Jesus and knowing who you are. Because right now, the church, not in general, all churches, where are the people in the churches? I can't go to church because there's a coronavirus going on, but yet I see Facebook and you're at the beach or you're at the store at HEB with thousands of people walking by you, but you can't come to church where the true healing is, Amen. where the Redeemer is. Our words should be thought of and reflected on before we make a confession to things. Let the fire of God burn away the bad intentions, thoughts, reflections that are in your heart. He wants to break your heart from the stress, the anxiety, the fear, because when you break those things, you're able to speak confessions of God and not confessions that will cause you to be depressed and not want to come to church. The Lord loves you and he has the best thoughts for you, but we must become followers of Jesus. Jesus had a, always had our backs, but do we have his? History tells me, my Bible tells me, that he walked, he preached the word, he confronted the devil, he was betrayed, he was nailed to the cross, he spilled his blood, and he died for my sins, for our sins. He's got our back, but do we have his? Are we going to be true followers of the King of Kings? Following Jesus will change you. It's not supposed to leave you in a place of dryness. When you are in his presence, there's no place of dryness. And one good example of that is Pastor George. Amen. Amen. That man beats, breathes Jesus. And that's, every, every time I sit back there, I look at him. And every Sunday and every Wednesday, there's more passion coming out of him. Amen. Because why? Because when you dine with the King of Kings, when you've broken your perfume, you'll know. When you truly know that you've broken your perfume, your past, you're able to come and be with the King of Kings. It's different. Amen. You move different. You worship different. You preach different. Why? Because you're so passionate for the one who gave you breath, yes. for the one who gave you life. Yes. So you see, a dry place, don't come tell me you're dry because there's no dryness in the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. You're right. The Bible says that we go from level to level, from glory to glory. Amen. There's no such thing as dryness in the kingdom of God. You're right. I have never had a dry place because I choose to follow Jesus. Amen. When you welcome him in your life, he does all the questions. You see, I never go and say, well, this, what do I think of this, Lord? No. He does the questions. He asks the questions. I'm just there to listen. He corrects me and rebukes me. He tells me when I'm right and when I'm wrong, when I have to go forgive, when I have to go apologize, when I have to go humble myself, when I have to get on the altar, when I have to do things differently. He comes, he corrects me. So respond to his invitation to follow him, to truly follow him. Because anyone who follows the true identity of who Jesus Christ is will learn how when they are corrected, they will know when things are going and they will not come against or speak against anybody that is trying to correct them. 
Because Jesus put somebody in this house for a reason. We might not like something, we might not like the lights, but we have to keep our mouth closed because that's not my decision. It's who are you following? Because that Python mentality will suck the life out of you and will leave you dry. Today the choice is yours. So response to his invitations to follow him. It's the story that you will tell about him that will cause a change. You see, every time they have a chance, I speak to people about Jesus. I, 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 I try to tell them as much as I, I, I can in five minutes, or you know, they say, speak your testimony in five minutes. What story are you going to tell? So follow him so you can tell the story, the, tell of the God of your faith. Because this is my story. This is my testimony. But what is your testimony? People are searching for your testimony. They're searching for what is it that you mean? So tonight, the God of your faith wants you to follow him. He wants you to search for him. He wants you to dine with him. So if you've never asked Jesus to come into your heart, tonight is the night to let the King of Kings come into your heart Amen. and dine with you. Amen. And I'm going to pray a simple prayer so you can make Jesus your Lord. Or you might say, you know what, Pastor Esmer, I backslid, I want to get back to to that relationship with Jesus, well, this is your moment. And after that, I'm going to pray. So, Heavenly Father, I just come before you. I thank you that tonight I accept Jesus to come into my heart, to come and dine in my heart. And I thank you, Lord, that you died and resurrected, Father God. And I thank you that tonight I accept you, Jesus, to be my Lord and my Savior in my heart and in my soul in every season of my life. So tonight I thank you that you have accepted me, that I can embrace you and live by your side, Lord. And I thank you that right now Jesus is rejoicing in heaven. Jesus is rejoicing. If you accepted Jesus or you might say, I came back to the King of Kings. And before I leave, I'm going to pray, and, and then we're going to have some announcements. But thank you, Father, for tonight's word. Thank you, Father, that not only did you pierce my heart, but I thank you that, it, that the people who are watching, the people here in our congregation, I thank you that, Father God, this word was for them. This season is for them, Lord. And I thank you, Father God, that you will pour down the blessings upon them, Father God. I pray that if they need to break that perfume, Father, that you will break it. Father, that, that if they need to, to let go of that python mentality, right now in the name of Jesus, we break you. We break you from their lives in the mighty name of Jesus. And we thank you, Father God, that we can dine with you, Father God. And that we can go up to the next level from glory to glory, God. And I thank you, Father God, that you deepen our relationship. That you take us to another level, Father God. And I thank you, Father God, for this night. And I thank you, Father, for the privilege of being able to stand up here, Father, and release your word, Father God. I thank you, Father God. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. Amen, amen. amen. And we have... An announcement from our very own youth pastor, Pastor Kiki. Check. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> we just want to invite all of you who are in middle school or high school to our services Sunday nights at 6, from 6 to 8 p.m. We're having them here at the church, but we're also having them on Zoom. And you can get the information that you need for that by messaging myself or Pastor Robert. You can have our numbers or in our social media at breakfree underscore FCC. All of our social media is under the same name. You can message us there and get the information. If you're not ready to come 
out to the church yet, but you want to participate in the services, we want to Zoom with you guys and get you guys connected on our discussion times. We're doing a really cool series on identity and redefining yourself by what God says about you, not what this world says about you. Let me tell you something real quick. The attention span of the average middle school and high school student is seven seconds. That's, that's crazy, right? I learned something the other day. The average attention span of a goldfish is eight seconds. This world is defining this generation in the most negative, worst way possible, and God doesn't define you that way. So if you want to hear more about what God has to say about you and not what the world has to say about Gen Z, come join us on Sundays at 6.